Today's video is sponsored by Curiosity Stream. Hello my peeps and welcome back to the channel. I have missed you all so so much. If you didn't already know, I took a few weeks off to refresh, recharge the batteries, but I'm feeling great. And I figured we'd come back strong as ever with another epic food showdown. I'm gonna be pinning the chocolate chip cookie recipes of Rosanna Pancino, Chef John from Food Wishes, Joshua Weissman, and Binging with Babish up against each other. A lot of you guys sometimes ask me why I feel the need to do these big mega versus episodes when I have said in the past how stressful they can be. And honestly, it's because I go away for a few weeks and claims like this start getting thrown around. These are the best chocolate chip cookies in the entire world. And not only does this produce literally the perfect chocolate chip cookie, but have no fear because the Mythbuster of murky recipes, the muckraker of musty foods, <laughs> is back once again, so let's get right into this one. You may be asking yourself, how different can chocolate chip cookies possibly be? And to that I'd say, between unsalted, salted and brown butters, chopped chocolate, chocolate chips, dark chocolate, like, you'd be surprised. But before we can explore any of those possibilities, I wanted to give a huge shout out to my friends over at Curiosity Stream. Over my break, I was looking for something new to watch, and Curiosity Stream filled that void perfectly. From podcasts and documentaries to informational TV and feature series, Curiosity Stream is your one-stop shop for any topic, ranging from space exploration to food to adventure and history. If you're already an Amazon Prime Video user, Curiosity Stream is an easy extension. It's available to watch worldwide on any screen. And right now you can click the link in the top line of the description and get 40% off a year's subscription. And thank you so much to Curiosity Stream for sponsoring today's video. As far as our cookies go, Rosanna Pancino, this is your first time on the channel and you are up first today. I grabbed some all-purpose flour and kosher salt, baking soda and granulated sugar, two sticks of salted butter, light brown sugar, a couple eggs, some semi-sweet chocolate chips, reprimand any runaway eggs, and some vanilla extract. I figured this would be a really good starting point because this recipe is as basic as you can get. Both the dough and her finished cookies look exactly like a store-bought or bakery cookie in the best way possible. And they come together super easily as well. You're gonna combine all of your dry ingredients into one bowl and set it aside. We're gonna get super comfortable with this process throughout the day, I think. And then cream together both your sugars and super soft room temperature salted butter. The salted butter is probably the only quirk of this recipe. Most cookie recipes call for unsalted butter, but if you're somebody like Babish who throws a tablespoon of salt back in the recipe anyway, it's kind of gratuitous to use unsalted butter. This is also the only recipe that doesn't get chilled in the fridge for a while, so if you're in a pinch and you need cookies ASAP, this is probably the recipe for you, regardless of outcome. You want your dough mounds to be about two tablespoons each and a couple inches apart so they don't run together in the oven. And you're gonna bake these off at 375 degrees for eight or nine minutes. Immediately, I love how these look, how some edges are a little bit more brown, there's some pale spots on the top, that should bode pretty well for the texture. And finally, now we can start today's cookie inhalation. <laughs> These are just as classic as you can possibly get. From the smell, the look of them, they look so good. I haven't mentioned this, but unless otherwise noted, I'm gonna let them all cool for like 10 to 15 minutes. I feel like that's a good uh, median time. They're still super soft and delicate in the middle, but they're like super crispy and perfect around the outside. This is a cookie that you can never go wrong with. Is it the best cookie I've ever eaten? No, but it's super quick and easy and delicious, and it's a great starting point. Up second today, we've got the legendary Chef John from Food Wishes. I grabbed some all-purpose flour and kosher salt, baking soda and granulated sugar, semi-sweet chocolate chips, some decent quality grass-fed butter, one egg vanilla extract, some milk, and light brown sugar. Once again, this is a pretty simple recipe. It does take a little bit longer to whip up because it's all done by hand. There's no electric mixer in sight. 
no sifting. It's a whisk, a rubber spatula, and some forearm strength, and that's pretty much it. Yes, it might take a few minutes longer and feel like more work, but you're gonna have a lot less to clean later, so maybe it evens out. Now the main ingredient-based differences between these first two is obviously the butter. And also, this recipe gets a few tablespoons of milk. How that's gonna affect the final texture or flavor or moisture, I don't know. <laughs> because, as you will see, these cookies end up being super small and thin and crispy looking. They do have to rest in the fridge for a minimum of two hours just in a Ziploc bag. Side note, if you're just doing that to have the dough firm up and make it easier to work with, it's kind of pointless to leave it longer than an hour or two. It's only gonna get so cold, you know? If you're developing flavors, that's one thing, but for firmness and like workability, an hour or two is fine. So these guys are going to be half the mass of the last ones. We're going for one tablespoon each. They're gonna bake at 375 for a little bit longer, about 12 minutes. And as you probably guessed, these yielded a much more thin, crispy, uh, dark colored cookie. How they will stack up against all our other options? Let's find out. This might just be in my head, but oh shit. I feel like these smell a lot more intensely, like in the house and just having them under my nose. I feel like there's just uh, stronger smelling. Look how like paper thin they are too. They look good though. Like the perfect little three by cookie. I'm just not realizing how hard this is gonna be. I think it, it might just come down to a preference thing. Uh, I like mine almost equal parts crispy to chewy to soft. This is obviously a very high ratio of uh, crunchy, and they're not even as thin as Chef John's were, so his were probably even crunchier. Of course it's delicious, I'd be happy eating this at any point, but for me today, it's gonna have to go into second. Third on the checklist is Mr. Joshua Weissman, a recent regular on the channel who always comes through with some pretty great stuff. You're gonna need some all-purpose flour and cake flour, granulated sugar and cornstarch, a pound of dark chocolate bars and baking soda, kosher salt, light brown sugar, five eggs, vanilla extract, and lots of unsalted butter. Now I acknowledge that this is textbook first world problems, but recently I've started hating chopping chocolate. I feel like no matter what you do, it just flies everywhere. You can't scrape it back with your hand because the heat from your hand melts the little shards so fast. It stains up your cutting board, you gotta wash it or else it'll get on everything else you use. It's just kinda annoying and I sound like an entitled brat so I'm gonna stop complaining now. <laughs> if you haven't already noticed, I almost purposely constructed this video so that the super classic and traditional recipe went first and then with every subsequent recipe we get a little bit funkier and weirder. For this one, we're obviously using a ton of super dark chocolate chopped up. We are using almost equal parts uh, cake flour to all-purpose flour. That should make a much more tender cookie. And as you know already, the dry stuff gets thoroughly mixed together and tossed to the side. And as for the wet stuff, we're using two whole eggs, three egg yolks, a ton of light brown sugar, and then also a ton of melted butter. I just realized it's kind of funny I'm putting Joshua and Babish up against each other in this one, even though in Joshua's video, they're just hanging out, eating some cookies. I assure you guys, it's no hard feelings. I'm sure neither one of them watch or care <laughs> about my videos anyway, but just in case. But this whole recipe comes together in your stand mixer. You can add your flour a little bit at a time as the mixer is running, and then just fold in your chocolate chunks so it's not so rough on the, uh, the motor. This version is gonna get covered up and popped in the fridge as well for about 45 minutes until it's almost all the way chilled through. And this is the part that I've been a little worried to approach. Joshua claims that you want your cookies to be six ounces each. A huge like meatball looking mound. That's almost a half pound cookie, so these are going to be behemoth sized. The balls do get popped back in the fridge for about 25 minutes so they won't spread so much, but I was still scared, so I only put three on my cookie sheet and baked them at 425 degrees for about 12 minutes, and yeah. As expected, these are enormous, approximately four times the size of our previous two cookies, but they should taste good, so let's give them a shot. If you haven't yet grasped the scale of how big this is, it barely fits on the damn plate. 
but also it's like bigger than my face. <laughs> I just noticed this now, but look how like magical and swirly the bottom looks. That's pretty cool. Let's see if we can get one of those cool like chocolate pole breaks. Eh, kind of. <sighs> yeah, bit of a mess as expected. Uh, but this is damn good. I don't know how different the textural ratios would be if it was like shrunk down to a actual cookie size, but honestly, it's pretty perfect right now. The outside is super crisp. The very middle is like slightly underdone, which some of you might say is gross. I don't really care. I kind of love that. And then the, uh, the very middle, the mantle, <laughs> if you will, is like all the way cooked through, but super chewy. My stomach is going to be hating me later, but I do not care. This is so good. Last, but certainly not least today, is Binging with Babish's Chocolate Chip Cookies. And for his, I grabbed my depleting reserve of all-purpose flour and cinnamon, kosher salt and granulated sugar, dark chocolate chips, unsalted butter, baking soda, two eggs, and dark brown sugar. Admittedly, this recipe is the reason I thought about doing this video at all. A couple weeks ago, I was binging Babish <laughs> videos and when I saw this and how it has brown butter, dark chocolate chips, cinnamon, and dark brown sugar, I wanted to do it immediately, but I waited for today. If you've never tried brown butter before, I highly recommend you try to make some for your next cookie recipe. It's one of my all-time favorite smells. It's super easy to do once you kind of got the feel of it. Just keep an eye on those milk solids on the bottom of the pan. The second they start to turn brown, dump them out and stick that mix in the fridge to completely re-solidify. The dry ingredients are pretty standard in this one with the exception of the cinnamon, which I kind of love the idea of. You know, if it doesn't come through super strongly, I can imagine it being just that perfect flavor enhancer. And even if it does come through a lot, I mean, who doesn't like cinnamon? So this should make for a pretty delicious cookie. Once again, we are whipping out the stand mixer to whip together that completely hardened brown butter, our white sugar and the dark brown sugar. I love the fact that he uses dark brown too. If you didn't already know, brown sugar is literally just granulated sugar with the addition of molasses. The light versus dark brown sugars is just how much molasses they added. I don't know if this is just me, but I kind of love learning things that seem so simple and obvious that I never really thought of throughout life. For example, you can make brown sugar if you have molasses and granulated sugar at home. And you can also make powdered sugar by like blending up normal sugar. It's kind of wild. Now this recipe goes in the fridge too, and it can stay there for as little as an hour or for up to three days. Today, I don't have that kind of time. And for the sake of fairness, when judging against the other recipes, I left it in for about two hours. The very last kind of neat portion of this recipe is instead of just forming normal dough balls, you're gonna break that ball in half and then leave the newly exposed side upright. This procedure is in an effort to create some uneven, kind of craggly crevices along the top. And let me tell you, these smell so damn good. I'm so damn excited. I, this has been weeks that I've been waiting to make these. Look how perfectly golden brown this got across the bottom, around the edges. It really did make a super interesting kind of rustic looking top by breaking it in half. Oh man. Oh my God. You need to patent this and sell these Babish. Holy sh I'm a little bit lost for words. But sometimes when I'm making these versus episodes and I'm cooking and eating the same recipe four or five times in a day, I get a little bit sick of it by the end. Not today. This is such a magical combination of slightly bitter chocolate, super rich and like decadent uh, dark brown sugar, the brown butter, the cinnamon is like such a nice touch. It doesn't taste cinnamony, but you can tell that there's something else going on in there. Everyone drop what you're doing and make these like right now because this is one of the best cookies I've ever eaten. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, leave me a big old like. Once again, I missed you all. Thank you so much for being patient, letting me take a few weeks off. It's mostly to like clear the mind, recharge, prevent burnout mainly, um, and it's worked the last few years. So happy to be back. I'm ready to get back in the swing of things. And uh, I'll see you next time. So have a wonderful weekend. Peace.
Would be M, M without the A, D Flipping burgers and my money, super lazy Try and make a meal tonight, they ain't pay me Try and supersize my life with my A-team Yeah, our style wasn't wavy, but we had a vision